Office real estate in Canada has suffered from a relatively slow return to work post-pandemic. It's interesting, in Europe, as far as I know, people have been quicker to return to the office than they have in North America. Brings up the question of what factors could help boost the office sector in Canada. Will it ever fully recover to its previous glory? We are taking a look now at a new report from Colliers, and we're joined by John Duda. He's President, Real Estate Management Services at Colliers Canada. It's great to see you. Great to see you, Andy. It is kind of surprising. The office vacancy rate's still moving up, even though quite a few people have returned to the office. It is. So, uh, you know, it, it has risen over the past year. It's gone from an average of 2.5 days in the office to 3.3. And this is mostly due to mandates, uh, but it still is an employee, employee's market <laughs> and it's hard to get people back. But the reasons are, are shifting as well. If you look in the major cities like Toronto, Montreal, Vancouver, uh, traffic congestion and, and problems in uh, public transit is a big issue and it's having an impact on uh, people's decision to come in and when. So if we looked at uh, what the numbers are telling us, we could lower the vacancy rate by 2% in Toronto by reducing that commute time by 10 minutes. 10 minutes? 10 minutes. It doesn't seem like a lot, but It doesn't yeah, seem like yeah. a lot, but on average, uh, you start adding it up, and this is from the studies we've been doing with the tenants in the building, and they're telling us this transit to commute is a big factor in their decision to come in and when. I mean, for some people, it's like a day's work, even getting to work. I'm glad I can just jump on my bike. But some people <laughs> struggle with traffic, uh, public transit. Exactly. exactly. Um, here's an interesting trend that when, you're, when you hear from customers um, looking for suburban office space, parking is a bigger issue often than the rent. Yes, uh, you know, over the years, there's a consistent theme with tenants. One is cost and the other is access. If you can't get to that building easily, and it, it's not of much value to the tenants. So um, with all the transit issues, um, having your car there and having the space available to park your car is, is incredibly important. Our and are, do developers take that into account? Well, they do, of they course. Do. Yeah, yeah. They do, for sure. Looking at the national vacancy rate, you see, you guys see it actually edging up right into the second quarter of next year? Yes. So it still is uh, edging up, but it's not an even playing field across all the asset types. Okay. And really the assets that are well looked after, well located, they're, they're doing quite well now. The assets that have not had the right kind of investment in them, that could be older, poorly located, they are struggling more. So it's not an equal story across asset types in the different cities. I'm just wondering, what could employers do? Could they could they offer a shuttle bus? It's hard to see that working if people are living all over the place. No, it, there is, there is few things. One is to uh, petition the cities to improve the situation in the transit, whether it's through the transit system itself or through how they're managing the roadways. If you look in downtown Toronto, it, it's a mess. Oh. The roads are a mess, and it has to do with construction, with new buildings, and with uh, you know infrastructure work that's going on. So that's that's one opportunity. You know, another study that we have uh, talking to the tenants has to do with privacy. So having open office is a deterrent for people to come in because you're so used to having that quiet space mm -hmm. at home and putting your head down and doing your work. And they're saying very loudly, if we had private space, and it doesn't necessarily mean a private office, mm -hmm. but if we had more privacy, we'd be more likely to come in. What about the much derided cubicle? Is there something to be said for it? Uh, yeah, I, I think again, it's how, what kind of privacy is needed. Mm -hmm. I don't think people care as much as I need to be able to do my job. Yeah. And that comes first. So cubicle could be an answer. I, um, I use noise cancelling headphones and I listen to rain on a river. <laughs> <laughs> Works for me. <laughs> but of course, I've been in newsrooms all my whole career. I'm used to noise and tantrums, et cetera. <laughs> it is, what about new office construction? Has that it must have dropped off. Oh, it definitely has dropped off. And now what we see is new office coming online, like in Toronto, uh, where there has been quite a few new, new buildings right in the core here coming online. Uh, but the latency period is years a, for those. Many yeah. years, yeah. many years. But you won't see a lot of new construction in this environment. And people, developers, pension funds, the people with the big money who finance these things, they're thinking decades ahead 
are they cooler now on putting money into offices? I think everyone's cooler in putting money into office right now. The vacancy rate is just too high. So uh, until this uh, balances itself out and we see a different trend in place, it's unlikely there's going to be a lot of investment. We've had just this huge social experiment, haven't we? We, we shut down the economy basically in 2020, changed ways of working. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's shifting and it will continue to shift. And our information is showing that it likely will settle around four days a week. And, and that's an interesting number because at four days a week, you can't actually reduce your space anymore. Oh. So uh, it's not there yet. Uh, we're still seeing the increases taking place and people coming in, but it's, it's slowing down. There was a bit of a push in the last year. It has slowed down a bit with the same trend in the US. Um, and there still is an employee's market, which it's one of the factors that plays into it. But there is much more of a desire still at that C-suite level to see people back in the office. Because they're convinced that productivity is lower? There, if yes. at home there, there's, yeah. there's many impacts. It's hard to uh, identify. I'm sure each business has its own yeah. triggers. Uh, but there was a study came, came out of the University of Chicago in, in the past few months. And they did a deep dive with an international firm on the professional services side. And they very clearly said there is a drop in productivity. And they went into all the details around it. Now, they were only looking at one firm and it was quite large. Uh, but I thought the most interesting part of it was they said that the, the managers had an idea of where that productivity loss was. And he said they were bang on on where it was. So listening to your gut a little bit, understanding how your business uh, functions, you can understand pretty well where that productivity drop is.